and these guys together, oh, Boris. But that's like the cream. They're like cream. Do it! Yeah, he did! No, he got it! Hello and welcome to the map South Rune in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. It's gonna be a 3v3 replay we're gonna cast today between the White Isengard player Toxy City, his ally the Green Isengard player Noel. His ally, the yellow Mordor player with health. Their opponents at the bottom right, the blue Gondor player Nomiko. His ally in the middle is going to be the orange Rohan player Dunedain. And his ally, bottom left, is going to be the green Mordor player Max Smart. So it's a Mordor, Rohan and Gondor versus Mordor and two Isengards. It's a very interesting map though. It looks pretty, you know, iconic to me. Like a really great Far Hara design. And it's almost like a good against evil matchup too. I mean, the Mortar here is disturbing the peace, by the way. Like, he's the only one who is kind of not fitting in, in my opinion. But it's a good matchup. Like, double Isengard later on will mean that, you know, basically you can shut down the leadership bonuses completely. Because you have freezing rain, two of them. You can use one. The second it goes off, you can use the other one. And keep the leadership pretty much disabled non-stop and you can use it in rotation too so basically the way the freezing rain works it has like six minutes cooldown but it is like three minutes long long active so basically you use rain after three minutes it turns off and your ally is using it and by the time your ally's rain is turning off you can use yours once again you know so perma debuff all the time there is a creep the trolley in the middle of the map and we have also a bunch of goblin warriors goblin creeps in the middle yeah, looks pretty nice though, the map. And also very important to mention is the fact that we have a camp situation. So basically no campy playstyle. We have a less available base for the players and less defensive capabilities too. So it should be going straight up into the action. And indeed we have a three Urukai rush. So the Isengard player went actually for two Urukai and rushing now with the Eye of Sauron and Warchan. It's a very strong rush because at this point the units would deal 100% more damage. And they have 50% more armor and 100% more code experience. And they will commit on the Citadel. But Mordor will be able to get a bunch of towers before this is gonna happen. And he will still lose this, by the way. There is no chance he can defend this. The Rohan player was sending his uh, peasants to defend his ally. But the Citadel is going to be destroyed. Definitely. But I don't think he will be able to deal much more damage than that. Because, again, lots of towers beside one of them. is shooting non-stop. Peasants are here with the Eye of Sauron too. And Theoden is also around. Theoden is very great when it comes to defend against Swartman because he can trample them down on the ground all the time and knock them down pretty much. But he will be able to revive this no problemo. Um, in the meantime, this model player went also for the Orc Pit, um, which is kind of odd because normally what you see that Mordor is skipping the Orc Pit and going for the Troll Cage right off the bat. But look at this, this model didn't go for the Orc Pit. So Rohan going for the Archer range and this Gondor going for the Stable. Okay. Yeah, Cavalry, um, when you pretty much play Gondor, Rohan, Mordor combination, one of them, either Rohan or Gondor, has to go for the combos. If you're wondering why, it's because the Drummer Troll in this game doesn't give leadership to the Cavalry. So basically Gondor Knights and or Rohirrim, they won't receive any bonuses from the Drummer Troll. And Drummer Troll is the best leadership unit in the game. And you want to go for the combos, because you can make your combos insanely strong. So basically, uh, Rohan with the Yeoman Archers or later on Elven Warriors with Theoden leadership, you know, with Witch King, with Drummer Troll, with Eye of Sauron, this Gondor player can also recruit Boromir and Faramir for the leadership part, can become, uh, you know, like Eru Iluatar, pretty much. So we have a level 3 Peasant Yeoman Archer combination. And look at this. He will creep the troll now in the middle, Smart Micro, luring the troll away from the lair. There is a Berserk and also Lourdes. Lourdes might be able to cripple him, but the problem is when Lourdes is only level 1, you have no Carnage, and I don't think you have the damage output. Okay, he crippled him, but the troll has been taken down. Now the question is, can you, you know, kill him? Beautiful trample to deny them the damage output. Do, do they have heal though? Level 3 Theorin, Lourdes is shooting. You can deny Lourdes from shooting. If Lourdes is being attacked in a melee situation, he cannot shoot arrows anymore. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Uruk has been taken down. Just like that. And Theodin, the king of Rohan, will be able to survive. And it's a huge... Out Look at this. He's almost level 4 too. That's gonna unlock the glorious charge already at the beginning of the game pretty much. Orcs are slaughtering the slaughterhouse and the lumber mill. And he also went for double troll cage. 
Very interesting. That's gonna delay your, uh, your Witch King quite a bit. And I think you should be trying to go for an Asgore Witch King in this matchup. This Mordor going for a one troll cage, and he will definitely be the one who is going to get um, the Witch King on the field way sooner than his opponent, the yellow Mordor player, withheld. It seems to be a map without out. Oh, never mind. I take it back. So we have outposts on each side, right, and also left. This map seems actually to be like a symmetrical map. Every single player has like two settlements next to their base. And Isengard might be trying to creep this and control the outpost right after. With Farami on the field, the captain of Gondor, who can also be plan you know, placed next to the combos of the Rohan play later on. And with this combat experience leadership bonuses you have, you can get any hero from level 3 all the way to level 5, level 6 in a, in a few seconds, pretty much. There comes the first big push. Isengard doesn't seem to be ready. You have Elven Warriors, one of them. Yeoman Archer, one of them. Two, actually, two Elven Warriors and one combo. Level 4 unlock for the Glorious Charge. Very nice. You can see, he's placing the Theorin next to the combos so he can share experience with them. And now, boom, Glorious Charge. He has the chance now to go for a Juicy Trample, the Uruk Pit. Level 3 is going to be destroyed. The Titadel of the Orphank from Isengard will be destroyed next. Trample incoming with the Tainted Land combination. And... Doesn't kill the pikemen because they are immune to be trampled, they cannot be knocked down by the cavalry, but kills every single archer, you know, inside the combo, which is the main damage unit from a combo battalion. Uh oh, but the Isengard beast is falling apart, dude. Troll, the trolls are coming, four trolls. Um, Warchan doesn't work on trolls either, doesn't affect monsters, but too many trolls, no witch king around. And the splash damage with the tree. I have seen the question in the comment section down below. Some of you guys were asking, what is the downside of picking a tree? I mean, realistically speaking, there is almost no downside. Because you only get like a huge area damage potential with your troll. However, there is one single tiny downside. And the downside is that you cannot use any ability anymore. You cannot unmount the tree. You understand? So basically, you cannot make it undone. <laughs> you have to fight with the tree for the rest of the game. That means, for example, if your troll is low like that, you cannot eat an orc anymore to regenerate your HP. But if the troll is level 2, you don't have to do that anyway. It will heal up over time anyway. Okay. I mean, the Isinger player was almost defeated, Toxic City, and but he will be staying in the game for now. We have Aragorn on the field too. He doesn't go for Armory. He want to go for the hero party. Theorin will be revived pretty soon. Faramir is just chilling, doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> just like in the films. I mean, Faramir doesn't do anything un unless his father, Denethor, is going to command him to do the some crazy shenanigans. Like, for example, hey, Faramir, my son, I want you to ride to Osgiliath, the city which was overrun by the orc warriors. There are only 15,000 orcs with plenty of trolls, Mumakis waiting for you, but I don't care. You got this. And Faramir, the desperate little boy he is, trying to make his daddy proud. We have Saruman on the field for leveling up. And also, double Saruman can be very effective, by the way, later on. Double Fireball, you know, double Warm Tongue. Pretty much very, very strong. Um, this Mordor going for the Witch King, but as expected, the Witch King from the other Mordor player, the green Mordor player, is already recruited. That means the Pikeman cannot play the game anymore. The creep is still remaining on the field for now, but it's going to be done now by the Rohan player Dunedain. Um, he's getting more and more power points collected, and we're going to take a look into the power points in a bit. But it looks like he will be capturing the outpost for himself with a well statue so he can camp on the spot. Okay, so uh, the Gondor player at the bottom right has nearly two power points collected after the Elven Wood and the heal. Dunedain, the Rohan player, has land, draft, heal. And the, the Isengard player top left has Industry and Warchant. Max Smart, the green model player, it's kind of confusing, I know, but, you know, I gotta do that. <laughs> it has almost two power points after the uh, land and the Eye of Sauron. Withheld, the other model player on the opposite side of the map, <laughs> has Eye of Sauron in Tainted Land. And last but not least, Noel, the blue Isengard player in the middle of the top side, has almost Industry unlocked after the Warchant. So, big commitment. The Witch King is around, the wall is breached. I mean, it's like an open door anyway. You don't have to destroy the parts of the wall because you cannot close the gate. There is no gate to be closed. Isengard is committing. We see multiple lands, and that's going to be a situation we will eventually see most of the time. Isengard is going to kind of handicap himself if he uses land. But in some certain situations, I think you have like no other choice. 
because if you never go for the land it will be a three versus one situation like you have only one mortar with the land but they have mordor gondor and rohan with lands so if you never cover it the entire map in long terms will, will be filled with enemy lands and every single one of these areas is permanent so the land doesn't disappear over time and on the enemy land you have zero leadership in addition to that the enemy units get additional armor land actually a crazy ability by the way like huge the combo got slaughtered the, the, <laughs> the drum troll actually actually drum trolls are boxing the combos dude it's very funny beautiful hit but it's gonna be taken down right after and there is a chance by the way that aragon can get from level 5 all the way to level 10 in a bit so that's a legit thing that can happen in this game because with Drummer Troll and Eye of Sauron and Aragorn's own combat experience leadership, um, they have like around about 400%. So basically, he will level up 400% faster, you know, as long as he's staying close to the Elven Warriors when they kill stuff. Like for example, this dude. But he wasn't near to the Elven Warrior. Okay. So um, the damage output is legit. Like you can see, it's burst damage. You know, they are very, very strong. They level up like crazy level seven. Normally the Alvin Warriors, they require much more EXP to level up in compared to Yeoman Archers, for example, but it's not a normal situation in which we are finding ourselves in with this insane combination of Rohan and Mortal leadership together. In the meantime, the Isengard play is retreating because this Mordor needs help. Like, yeah, he has three trolls behind, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. He has the Witch King somewhere around. The Glorious Charge was kind of missing out, uh, like, one battalion of the Gunner Knights. And damage output, you cannot ignore that, right? You cannot ignore this. It's just too powerful. Level almost 7 Aragorn, level 6 Theodin can also level them up with the King's Fever over and over again. Not that they would need it, because once again, level 9, you know. Level 9, almost level 10. This guy is gonna be also level 9 in a bit. Witch King gives leadership. Drummer Troll is too far away. Nice split from the Rohan player. Warchant once again doesn't work. You cannot Warchant Trolls. <laughs> I mean, you can, but it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything for you. You can also Warchant technically. You can. You could Warchant your heroes, but it won't affect them. You understand? You know what I mean? Don't do it. Don't. Don't try things which are not working. I trust me on that one. I know what I'm talking about. It's not working. Okay. Rohan has actually lost quite a lot. Maybe it does work. <laughs> I don't know. This trolls were actually kind of tanky. But the motor player will only be remaining with one um, production building in one tower. But it's okay. I believe he should be able to rebuild. Beautiful fireball. Chunks deals crazy amount of damage. And Rohan will be forced to retreat. What is this motor player doing actually? He's kind of in a campy situation. Going for the siege works, but doesn't move with the catapults at all. Um, fiesta game. You know, I can already smell. This one is going to be a fiesta, dude. <laughs> like, 3v3 is almost exclusively are fiesta games. Like, we see crazy shenanigans in those 3v3 situations. They got us on the field. Um, all you got to do is put him next to the Alvin Warriors, and he's going to be level 5, 7 in one single second. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Gandalf on the field. Okay, now we have a hero party. We have Aragorn, we have Legolas, we have Gandalf, we, have, we had also Theodin before, Faramir. Is he still chilling here? No. Where is Faramir actually? Did he lose him? Yeah, he lost him. Okay, we are looking for a chance for a Visa Plus, but it's gonna be quite risky. This Isengard needs the assistance of his ally Mordor, but he lost the Witch King. He has only Drummer Troll to offer. So basically, as we are talking, the Rohan has more leadership available. Legolas just got level 3 in a second. Warchan coming in clutch. And the question is, how far away are the Isengard players from Rain? I mean, quite far away, actually. The white Isengard player is, like, almost five power points away from it. And the other Isengard player needs one and a half power point. Now we will see multiple lands one, like, once again being used over and over again. Uh, Isengard has crazy leadership. Lords has to be careful. Like, in a 3v3, the one thing you need to understand, you want to keep your heroes behind. Like, that's a very risky move. If Rohan would focus him in a bit... Oh, but he didn't pay attention to it. Okay. We see catapult shots. Beautiful. Where is the focus on Saruman? Okay, finally, he has been taken down. Aragorn is taking heavy damage from these combos. But the Nazgûls and Witch King are able to knock down the combos on the ground all the time. He missed Aragorn with the heal. Gandalf is looking for a chance to go for the Easter Light. Aragorn just one shot him. He is so low. Why is nobody trying to kill him? I don't understand. He is finally dead. Gandalf is also getting chunked. 
Where is the spot of the White Isengard player? What is he up to? What is he doing? I'm curious. I want to see what he's doing, actually. Let me check his money. Like, is he AFK? I think he's AFK. He, are you kidding me? Is this real? Now, he used the Warm Tongue. But he has bear Oh, he got caught by the Erowind. And Erowind one-shots heroes when you get caught. Like, is this legit? He's reviving his lords and... Not even Saruman, he has 13,000, but he has barely, finally, finally he will start recruiting units. Like, the one thing you need to understand, in a 3v3 situation, you get way faster money in compared to a 1v1 match or a 2v2 match. That means there is absolutely no reason for you to not build a second Uruk pit to produce the units way, way faster. Speed and tempo. Guys, listen to me. I have experience for many, many years in this game. So if you want to improve, care about your speed and tempo. Fill up every single second of your gameplay with some actions. When it's even only when it's healing up. But you want to move, you want to do stuff, you want to actively invest your money into something. The money you collect in your bank is meaningless if you can't use it. It doesn't do anything for you. Okay, we have even orc combos up on the field from the yellow um, model player. You know, the double Isengard, it, you might say it's a bad matchup, but it's actually not. Once again, they have a huge advantage in this matchup because they can shut down all the bonuses the Mordor Rohan have entirely. So basically, Theodin, leadership nullified. Aragorn nullified. Drummer nullified. Witch King, you know, obviously you know how it's going on. Saruman is being revived. Uh, Lourdes, level 5, that's good for even more leadership. Mordor has the Witch King back on the business. Back in the business. We see double troll cage, and that's what you want to do. Invest money, invest money. Look, here's the money to make trolls from this. Like two, don't queue up two, then you can make another one from here. So we have two of them coming out this, at the same time. Alvin worries, one of them is being level 10. Um, the outpost under attack, Farami being recruited to save today. <laughs> and we have, he went for the crossbow man, but you need to combine them. Combin combining units is very beneficial and it's super recommended too, especially in. Like, in 9 out of 10 keys, it's better than going for the crossbow man solo. There is only one scenario in which I would recommend you to not collect, collect you know, group your units in a battalion. And that's when you play Isengard against Mord in a one-on-one -on -one match. Because there you need to kind of be fast. Dodge the incoming shots from the catapults, kind of try to disengage from trolls. But in every single 2v2, 3v3 situation, combining units is so much better. Not only because they are cost efficient, you know, like crazy. But also, hold on a second. Oh, oh my goodness, do you see the burst damage? Yikes. Trolls are charging, there comes the first freezing rain. Let it rain, people, let it rain. Yet, yeah, combining units. And the second reason is, the Uruks are too tanky. They can tank multiple shots before the enemy can kill the real damage dealers from your battalion. The crossbowmen. So you can't, look, in this game you cannot... Um, manually target with your archers the units in the back so you can only right click a full combo and what will happen is you the units will automatically shoot the unit in the front in this case the urukai so unless you are fighting like this unless you are standing like this and the uh, you, uh, uh, you know enemy units are staying behind you that's why you want to always face with the uruks the enemy units hopefully it makes sense for you guys okay Gandalf level 7, Glorious Charge has been used from Theodin. He's gonna get dismounted right off the bat. You have to be mounted to be able to use the ability. The ends are coming, going to war, slaughtering the Isengard army, just like in the films. In the meantime, Hob Hob Hobbit, Peregrine, Took, and the Nazgul in the middle are chilling, having a party. And Isengard will be once again able to defend. But it seems like that the double Isengard and Mordor team are more in like a defensive situation rather than being in an offensive situation. He doesn't even revive his lords. There is a settlement which is not captured at all in the middle of the map. South Rune, that is. Oh, he catches him with the arrow wind. Okay, Aragorn getting knocked down before he goes down. Before the troll goes down. Aragorn is tanky, but not even he can tank this damage for a long time. Beautiful shots, you can see. He can even tank the catapult shots. That's how tanky they are. Gandalf, oh, 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 risky. Where is, where is Lourdes when we need him? Does he have no Lourdes? Let me check. No, he lost the Lourdes. They both have actually no Lourdes. That gives, of course, the Gondor player to do anything he wants with the Gandalf. Okay. Sonic, nice. Bizarre Blast. The Elven Warriors, that's good. 
The Nazgul is gonna get away just barely. Catapults are annoying to deal with, I know. There comes the Easter Light on the Drummer Troll, but you can see Drummer Troll is thank you, boy. He says, thank you, boy. He can tank this. He's like the Captain America, you know? I can do this all day long. Aragorn almost level 9 just from sharing experience. He didn't, he didn't kill nearly as much as he should or would when he wanted to become manually level 9. That didn't happen. Trust me on that one. I, I keep seeing this yellow dot on the, on the minimap and I always want to see what's going on. I always forget that it's actually Peregrine Took. <laughs> you full of a Took. You are disturbing my attention. You also see a Trebuchet, Siege Vorex from the Gunner player. Um, trebuchet are much stronger than catapults and in the patch 1.06 the drummer troll can buff the siege works too that also includes the trebuchet from the gondor ally so gondor trebuchet with the firestone are already dealing heavy damage but with the drummer troll being near to them they will deal 50 percent more damage so basically the damage leadership is calculated on your base damage so, for example, as the trebuchet are having a higher base damage than catapults do with Firestone, the 50% is more of an increasement in compared to the increasement. I, I, I think you know math. I don't want to explain too much. That's not a math class, okay? That's an entertainment commentary video. <laughs> I don't want to educate you because I pre I'm pretty certain that you are already smart. Okay, big push. You know, the reason why I'm trying to educate every single time in every single video, there are two reasons, and one of them, the major one, is actually because I wanted to become a teacher. When I was young, when I was like a children, and uh, they asked me what you want to do later on when you are grown up, I wanted to become a teacher. But then life happened, you know, like, like life is happening, not everything is going as planned. So I ended up being a salesman, <laughs> which I never thought I would be. But, you know, it happened. It happened. I mean, basically, guys, I moved with 12 years old to Germany. And I had to relearn everything, the language and everything, you know. So, basically, if you don't know anything about me, just like a quick rundown. I'm a Turkish guy living in Germany and creating English content. If that's not multiculti, I don't know what it is. So, nice to meet you. Thanks for, you know, watching the videos, by the way. It's kind of crazy. Like, when I created my YouTube channel, I was expecting nothing, pretty much, right? And I'm super surprised that we have almost 20,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you guys for, you know, for all the support, for watching. That's, that really means a lot to me. Thank you. I don't want to get too emotional now. You know, I don't want to have tears in my eyes now. Because Gandalf is about to die. That's what I want to cry about. 525 in the bank. Because of the pillage from Lourdes. He's making bank. Look, he's using his head as a weapon. That's a true warrior. A true warrior. Every piece of his body... And I mean every piece of his body can be used as a weapon. Take it as you want. And dude, can you please move away? This is annoying and disturbing. What is going on? This full of a duck. Lords, level 2 only. There comes the siege force for Isengard. Now we've reached a certain point in which we're gonna see the Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle-earth and the siege wars. And that's one of the major reasons why we also nerfed the Siege Forks Siege Weapons in the patch 2.22 because they are the most unfun units in the entire game, you know? If you ever played multiplayer game against Gondor Kemper, who was spamming lots of trebuchet and you had to deal with it, you can feel my statement. I mean, we didn't nerf them too much in terms of the damage department because they are supposed to deal damage. It kind of makes sense too. When you get hit by a giant ball with fire on your face, it should hurt, right? But we nerfed them in a, in, a, in a way that losing them is now more punishing. So you lose more money now, they cost a bit more resources, they cost more command points. And also when you lose them, your opponent is gaining more power points of them. In the patch 1.06, killing a catapult or trebuchet would give you less power points, legit, than killing Lambermill workers, which was just too lame. So while the trebuchet could generate lots of power points for you, but you're losing it, your opponent didn't get anything of it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got but it had to change now it's more rewarding it gives more experience to the units and heroes it also gives more power points to the to the player who is able to destroy those siege weapons okay lords level 8 they are rotating now to the bottom side i mean 
um, there is not too much of a team communication until the moment happens in which one of them is about to die. Then all everybody is rotating to the top side. But when I when I would play 3v3s, which I normally don't, to be honest, like 3v3s, I don't know. They're hard to be organized, first of all, to get six players online at the same time. Um, but the second thing is, it's like a leadership fiesta. The matchup is just too impactful, too important. And most of the time, the one side with the Mordor has a chance of winning is like 20 percent more chance of winning because Mordor is the best faction in the 3v3 situation Ganaf is back in the business the witch king oh that was really risky he's gonna get away barely they are kind of over committing lords crippled Ganaf but what now how do you want to finish him off he's drawing the sword he's angry I'm a servant of the secret fire the wield of the flame of Arnor dark fire will not avail you flame of Udun I know I'm, not, I'm a nerd. And but soon, guys, soon. The Lord of the Rings on Prime. Very, very soon. The Lord of the Rings on Prime. I'm actually I wanna I wanna give it a shot. And what we can do if you don't know is we can watch it together on our Twitch channel. So Twitch TV slash beyond standards, by the way. You can find the link in the description down below. Follow me there if you haven't already. I would love to meet you in an upcoming live stream. And as Twitch is owned by Amazon, you have the chance to stream every Amazon content on Twitch. And everybody with an Amazon Prime account can watch it. And so, with that being said, we have the chance to stream the very first episode episode in 2nd September 2022, the first episode of The Lord of the Rings on Prime together, and watch it together too. So if you guys are interested, let me please know in the comment section down below. I mean, it only makes sense if you guys want to do it, you know what I'm saying. I'm down, of course, because what we can do, we can watch it together and then judge it together right after the first episode ends. We can make like just chatting and communicate and share you know our expectations if we are disappointed if we are hyped if we are surprised all of that we can discuss together boom saruman showing the other wizard ganov who is the real wizard who's the daddy of the wizards we see land next to each other look one two three lands and every single one of them almost got caught with one single land he's gonna he's gonna actually hit or the you Hold on a second. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Look, this is one of the situations in which the War of Power wouldn't nearly be as impactful as this ability from Aragon is. Trust me on that one. Like, um, War of Power, you need to get into the close range to use it. And when you do want to do that, you will die. So basically, if your opponent pays attention to your Gandalf, he needs to just right-click him one single time, and your War of Power has like an animation time. You need like three seconds to put it off. And that, in this period of time, you will get killed. And on top of that, your War of Power doesn't deal true damage. So basically, when they have lots of armor from the heavy armor, from the armor leadership from Saruman, Drummer Troll, Witch King, and so on, they won't even die. You see? Just putting him next to the units gives him so much experience. And that's the main reason why we nerfed the combat experience in the patch 2.22 beautiful beautiful fireball i mean late lead game i think we are getting close to that um Gandalf, uh, gondor and rohan are very powerful in terms of summons in compared to the evil factions but also in compared to the two infinite skilling heroes in this case we are talking about aragon and gandalf because they are the two heroes in the game with a level 10 ability which can be game winning right there comes the aod big aod from the rohan player i believe Yep, and the AOD can clean everything. Isengard is running for his life. In the meantime, nothing else is happening on the map. The Rohan player wasn't even touched until now. This Mordor player uh, lost every Nazgul and Witch King. He needs to revive them all. He does revive them all. He went for Triple Troll, troll Cage too. And this Isengard player went for the Balis. Like, I believe the Siege Wards is kind of not needed. But you need instead... Oh, actually, did you guys see that? Did you guys see that actually? That's kind of crazy. Oh... <laughs> okay, I mean, I've seen. I wish I would I would be able to see I've seen wars, but that's like the cream, the like cream. Okay, I take it back. That's like the cream, the like cream. That's like the slow motion dev. If I ever seen one, you sit there, you see the catapult moving. <laughs> you know what? I take it. The thing is. Um, the games which are lasting over like 20 minutes I would say are quite exhausting for the players like BFME is kind of like crazily 
attention drawing game by the way like a multiplayer game in this game you need to pay attention constantly to multiple things to your money to your units to your heroes to your power points like there are so many things it i mean maybe you don't believe me but it is definitely the truth you know you need to pay attention to so many things at the same time which which means after 20 minutes 25 minutes it will become harder to do all of that stuff and it will open much more room for mistakes and for shenanigans like we have seen there comes the glorious charge they are looking for a chance by the way what of power is available you see he kept the range like he was staying far away it means the units got knocked back but they didn't die everyone in the circle is being damaged but slightly out of the out of the circle are also getting knocked back in Gandalf and that's exactly the, the reason why the what um the EOD from Aragon is more impactful than the ability from Gandalf because Gandalf is a very squishy hero and he needs to get into the melee range while EOD can just wipe out everything it doesn't take damage from units at all there comes the end summon lots of Gunner Knights with level 10 level 5 level 10 lords behind solo then witch king is chilling and doing nothing doesn't even tr try to protect the Uru captain hold on we see a balrog okay whose balrog is that but nomiko the gonna play has the eod so will he use it defensively to save his ally because the balrog in in bf me one is definitely able to destroy a full camp by himself you see the breath fire dealt more than um, destroyed more than 50 percent of the base what is he doing okay he's flying I, it was looking like he was flying to this location and whose Balrog is that, by the way? I'm very curious. The Gondor player was using EOD, but offensively. So they want to go for like a base swap. But remember, Rohan is no outpost. Right? Mordor destroyed the outpost in the meantime, by the way, at the bottom left. Oh, hold on. If Rohan is no outpost and he loses the base, he will be defeated. Hold on. Ah, oh, man. Did this really happen right now? Hold on a second. I'm kind of confused. I need to check. Double check. Yeah. You know what happened? Um, I, I will tell you what happened. The Balrog didn't have yet time. But the Balrog was from the dude who got just defeated. And as he got defeated, the Balrog got killed. So when the player defeat gets defeated, without leaving the game, everything from him on the field will die. It also includes the Balrog summon. So he could have finished it, but he couldn't. Now the problem is Rohan is going to try to buy this. Will he buy this in time? Oh, 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 oh. Mo oh, oh, Mordor bought it, Mordor bought it, Mordor bought it. How is Rohan not defeated? Oh, he bought the outpost. Okay. Okay. How? The outpost was under control from Mordor or not? I'm very confused right now. It's so much stuff is happening. Fireballing the catapult. Um, the, he bought the beast, but the beast, I mean, the camp got destroyed like two seconds afterwards. I think the mortal player was expecting the same thing what will happen like I was expecting it to be. Because I was expecting that the Rohan player will be defeated, but it was not the case. There comes the Balrog. This one is actually from Max Smart, the green mortal player. And he's going to go for the Isengard player, Noel. Noel is also Balrog, which can also be used, like, I believe what you want to do, uh, look, Theodine, the chicken, like, like, walking like a chicken burger, he's gonna try to get this, and um, Mordor got this offensively, Aragorn used the EOD, the small EOD, from his power, from his level 10, to deal with the trolls, and he should be able to defend his ally, no problemo, remember the outpost is gone, and Rohan will be able to buy this, does Rohan have money though? nope he doesn't have money so what noel could be doing this this isinger player is yeah 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 yeah. oh oh, oh he did it he was trying to do it but EOD, EOD, kill, 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 kill. do it yeah he did no he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't he he died while he was swinging his sword that would be the end of rohan because rohan has no money to buy this he would have lost the game and he would have lost the statue by the way I mean, it's unbelievable how close this Rohan player was to get defeated, not once, but twice. 
Dunedin is pinging this Rohan player. Rohan player is kind of poor. He has like one farm outside and that's it. That's all the money coming from. So he will need lots of time to actually get to the 2000 mark. And yeah, he's like at 600 something. Gondor was able to buy this one. Gondor's camp is still, you know, kind of fine. And Mordor didn't capture this until now. He will be capturing that. And he went for the industry. So Mordor should be able to get a bunch of money from this. Again, evil factions in general uh, getting much more money. And by the way, this Isengard didn't get defeated either. So and now for the past 3-4 minutes, it's a 2v3 situation. And the longer the, it goes like that, the less the chances are that the two players are going to be able to defeat the other three. So it's important for them to destroy this. They send a Nazgul to finish this off. Does Rohan have any army? That's the main question. I think he has Aragorn somewhere. Let me check. The yeah, Aragorn is still remaining on the field. He has also Legolas somewhere. Somebody is shooting this dude, but I don't know who is shooting him. Somebody is dealing damage to him. He will be able to destroy this, uh, the Citadel. Maybe the Mordor player should be sending some Nazgûls to help him out. Because if he loses them... Nah, he, never mind. He was able to buy this at the bottom right side. Okay. So he's playing like cat and mouse pretty much. Like Tom and Jerry. Trying to just stay alive. Because even if he has no money, even if he has like nothing to offer... He has Aragorn, right? He has Aragorn, who's going to be a one-man army. Theodine, for leadership. And most importantly, he has also EOD from the spellbook. So Rohan has all the power points unlocked. He will be super surprised now that the Rohan play isn't defeated yet. We hear another Balrog at the bottom right side. Um, but Rohan might be able to recapture this. I want to take a look into that. Okay. Um... Okay, if if I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be the last building. Rohan is trying to buy this. Don't don't don't. Yeah, okay, he's defeated. All right, that's kind of crazy. Like the amount of resources which had to be invested to defeat the Rohan player to turn the three v three finally into a two v three into the two v two situation. Now it's a two v two situation. Um, but the thing is, the Gondor player has two camps, and the Mordor player uh, has only one camp. This outpost has been destroyed, which Mordor will be capturing right now. It means even if his camp is going to be destroyed, he will be staying in the game. But this Isengard player is in a really bad spot. Like, let me check. Does he have money at all? Like, he's poor. He has one furnace with industry on it. I mean, he's kind of sleeping a little bit because he has seven power points, which can be invested into the Devastation. And the Devastation will give you around about 2,000 resources in a second. So basically, you can use the Devastation money to rebuild your stuff. I mean, uh, to be fair, there is not a huge potential of Devastation on a map like this, because on a map, on this map, you don't have too many trees around. But still, for example, here on the spot, you just use it, bam, you insta get money. Unfortunately, there is not like a tool or like a, like a, like a, a feature which can give the chance to you to send money to your allies or receive money from your allies. That's only added to the BFME 2. And, uh, you know, when we were making the patch 2.22, we, uh, we had actually lots of crazy ideas, you know. But unfortunately, the game engine doesn't support it. So we were actually thinking about a solution to that. And I'm also curious about your opinion, guys. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. We are thinking about recreating BFME 1, like it is now, in Rise of the Witch King. Similar to what the Edin mod did, but more like vanilla style, like Beef Me is right now in Beef Me 1. Like not with like 8-9 factions with like crazy spell books, but with like the mechanics and the more featured tools like Rise of the Witch King is offering. So we have a castle, camp, settlement system, just like in Beef Me 1. With like pretty much you play Beef Me 1 in Rise of the Witch King, but you have a little bit more tools, a little bit more opportunities to be added. For example, like... There are so many things which are existing in BFME 2, which don't in BFME 1. And you can't edit either, because the game engine is quite limited, unless you are experienced with like reverse engineering, or you are able to recreate the game on a different engine, you are very handicapped when it comes to add new stuff, you know? Okay. The Balrogs, um, the Mordor's last castle. Oh, no, he, but he still has the castle, let's, no, the Mordor play, this Mordor play bought it, okay. So, it's a 2v2 situation, but the problem is, uh, this Mordor has two camps, and the Gondor has two camps too. But the Mordor from the opening team into Isengard, they are only down to one castle. The Isengard never went for the Devastation, actually, which is kind of very 
Yeah, he went finally for the diversity. He finally realizing, oh man, I could have gotten for. The yeah, you see, I think he just forgot about it. You know, like again in in a, in, a, in a situation like that, with like lots of fiesta happening, you might forget about it. The, bo the troll is chilling. Troll attack them! Throw something! But it's actually from Max Mart. Okay, I take it back. And we've held has been defeated. Now it's a three v one situation, but this does this guy doesn't have too much stuff. And his last building is gonna fall. And that's gonna be the victory for the Mordor Gondor player. It started 3v3. We have, I mean, I think they got the chance to defeat, destroy Rohan multiple times. They invested, they had to invest so much time and resources into finally defeating him. And if they could do that without the Balrog summon twice, maybe they would have been able to deal much more damage. But it was a Fiesta game. And not every game has to be high skill leveled. Sometimes it's also funny games like we have seen. This game had like lots of potential. A AOD summoned from Aragorn, War of Power from Gandalf, lots of power points, lots of leadership, lots of armies, uh, Gondor Knights with, you know, Glorious Charge, Elven Warriors, all the crazy stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, again, do your thing. Doesn't cost you a single cent. Leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.